What's up guys, Justin here with The Character Essentials. So in today's video, we're kicking off a series talking about how we can use the new crowd simulation tools in iClone. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is gonna be a multiple part series talking about a bunch of the different features from scattering characters to using actor groups, nav meshes. Uh, we're gonna get really in depth. So if you're interested in any of this, make sure that you click that subscribe button because this is gonna roll out probably over the next couple weeks. So if you do wanna give iClone a try, I will link to it in the notes down below. Note that is an affiliate link, meaning if you do purchase through that link, I would receive a commission. For this video, let's do something very simple. Let's talk about how we can scatter actors in our scene. So we're gonna start just by adding a simple shape to this scene. And so in this case, we're just gonna go into our props and we're just gonna add a floor prop. So I'm just gonna drag this in here like this. Now we have a floor mesh in here that we can work on top of. And so in this particular video, we wanna talk just about how you can scatter a crowd on this surface, right? Nothing super complex. Um, like I said, we will be talking later on about some of the others like, uh, like uh, moving people along paths and other things like that. But in this case, what we wanna do is we just want to generate a crowd. Okay, and so you can find that tool by just scrolling up to the create option and under scatter, we're gonna click on the option for generate crowd. And that's all we wanna do in this case is we just wanna add some people to this surface right here. And note how there's an option over here for different kinds of generation. So for example, you've got random and formation, which we're not gonna to worry too much about for right now. And then we also have an option of how we can set the spawn region. And so you really have two options for spawn regions. You can either pick an object, right? So I could click on this object right here and notice how it's going to basically place these spawn points on this surface, which is great if you just have a surface you just wanna randomly put people in, or you can click on the option for create volume so if I do that, if I click on create volume, it's going to let me place a volume in my scene and it's going to scatter characters based on that, like this. And so what I can do is I can then move, rotate and scale this in order to set where it goes in the 3D space. So in this situation, for example, I'm going to move this so that I'm sure that it's intersecting with my surface right here. And then you could do things like adjusting the scale of it so if you wanted this to be a little bit wider, you can adjust this just like this in order to set where those characters are going to be. And so notice how now we have this nav mesh in here and we've got this little icon right here. And what the icon is, is this is a visual indicator of where characters are going to go and what direction they're going to be facing. So notice how if I click and drag this up, this is going to set the number of characters that are going to go in here like this. So I can use this to set how many characters there's going to be as well as things like spacing. So I can set my spacing to be wider or smaller like this. So I can make that bigger or smaller and then I can also again adjust the amount. Now note that there's options in here like random orientation. And so if I do random orientation like this, notice how it's gonna randomize the placement direction of those objects. So they're all kind of facing different directions when I do that. Or you can just like set the overall orientation in degrees like this. One other thing you can do is if you want them to face something, you can add a focal point in here. The focal point is going to set the direction that they're going to face. And so setting something like this up is probably the easy part. What you want to do though, is you want to set the actors that are going to be placed in here. And so you can do that using the actor pool right here. And so notice how you have a few different options. So one of the options is if I wanted to, I can just look in my character section right here. And I actually have some actor core characters that I've brought in here, but I'm pretty sure you could also bring in like any character creator character. So for example, if I wanted to bring in like this uh, Camilla right here, I can just drag her right here. And so basically what I'm doing is I'm setting the pool from which these actors are going to be drawn from. So for example, I could add like this businessman. Um, so these again are all kind of actor core models that you can bring in, but you can set all of these different options. Um, and this is basically going to be the pool from which it's going to pull these characters like this. Now, right now, um, if I was to deploy actors, what it's gonna do is it's going to generate 
the crowd of people and it's going to place them on these little dots right here. And so that may take a little while, especially depending on how quickly your computer works. But notice what that does is that takes those actors and it randomly places them in here. Now you do want to make sure that you, uh, you, you do want to make sure that you have like a large pool of characters in here. Um, otherwise you're going to get repetition. So like for example, and so I have eight spots but only five characters in here, that means there is going to be some uh, repetition. Now, one thing that you can do is there's a function in here to deploy those with variant materials. So I'm just gonna undo this. And if I do this with the variant materials, then I might add a couple more. So I'm just gonna do a search for actors tagged female. Notice how that pops that up right here. Then I can drag a couple more of these in here like this. But now, if I was to deploy those actors, it's going to place seven characters in here, and it's going to randomize the materials that are applied to the clothes on some of these actors. Um, now, I'm not sure if that's something you have to set up specifically, but notice how with these characters now, um, you've got some kind of like variant colors in here on the suit, for example. So this actor and this actor have different colors applied to them. So there's just a little bit of variation in here. But I was able to quickly place these actors. Now, one thing about this though, is if I click on play, nothing is happening. And so the reason nothing is happening is because I didn't tell this to apply any motions to these characters. So I'm gonna do an undo, and I'm going to set this up with motions and poses. And so what I can do is I can go into my animation function right here, and I can set this to have motions applied to it. Now, I have a few of these in here because I bought one of the packs um, of motions, the social interaction motions in here. You can use whatever motions you want. So for example, you could do the stand and wait right here for a female, um, but then you could also add some other social interactions in here as well. So maybe like the chat, um, what, whatever animations you want to apply here, um, really anything that's set as a motion in iClone, I think you can drag in here. But I'm gonna take this, and one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set these to have random start frames, and I'm going to loop this so that those animations are going to loop. And this is just gonna kind of like randomly apply those motions in here. But now if I click on the option for deploy actors, what it's gonna do is it's going to deploy those actors, but then it's also going to apply the animations to those actors as well. So then if I animate this, what's gonna happen is they're actually gonna be moving around. Um, and right now we may have some unexpected results because you've got, I don't have any male animations in here. I just have the female ones because um, those are the ones that I dragged in. But um, for for seeing what this is going to do, I think it's going to work fine. But if I click on the play button right here, notice how they all have kind of random animations applied to them out of that pool um, that I generated in here. So you can use this in order to quickly add these characters, but then you can also add the random animations to them as well. So you can use this in order to quickly generate or deploy crowds in your 3D scene. All right, so that's how we can generate crowds. Um, I'm gonna be talking more about the path function, the nav mesh, the actor groups in future videos. So make sure you click on that subscribe button if you want to check out iClone. I will link to that in the notes down below. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.